my interest today is to talk about how you can use the tool of arbitrage not only to make some extra money but to make and position yourself to make what could be a lot of money. What is arbitrage? This photograph gives you a very good explanation of what arbitrage is. Two gas stations across the road has gas price that is different by about 12%. Now gas is perhaps the most liquid commodity in the world. If you can have 12% arbitrage difference in gas, you can imagine the kind of arbitrage difference that can exist in the very liquid, illiquid junior mining industry. If I were here, if I, if I could, I would buy gas here and I would be selling gas on the other side of the road. Now, of course, people don't do that. And of course, there are people who go to the other side of the road to buy gas. I don't know why they do it. My job is to figuratively sell the gas to the other side of the road. I'm going to focus on three aspects of arbitrage, mergers and acquisitions. I want to talk about what happens when the same company trades on more than one exchange. And I want to touch on rights offerings. Let's talk about one company in a bit of details. This company does not exist anymore. But this was a company called Sunridge Gold. On the 6th of November 2015, they came out with a news release saying that the company would be acquired by a Chinese entity. They gave the number, the figure for how much the company would be acquired for and all you had to do was to do some primary school math to figure out how much money it was worth per share. The company also did the news release saying that all the cash would be released back to the shareholders and the company would be closed. The cash that you would have got would be would have been about 37 to 42 cent per share. When Sunridge opened for trading that day, the share price was 624 cent, which basically offered you a 58 percent arbitrage upside in cash terms, 58 percent. Now, can anyone guess how long would it take for this kind of arbitrage to disappear? Anyone has any guess? This arbitrage can carry on for months at a time, and this arbitrage can actually increase with time. This is something which I find very funny, but very similar to what you see in those gas stations why people buy to the more buy more expensive gas i don't really get it but this was the situation with the share price of sunridge over the next three months 40 days later it was still trading around the same price two months later the arbitrage upside was still 41 percent and a full three months later there was a still a 38% arbitrage upside. And remember, this was the cash that the company was going to return back to you. But this, is on, this was only a part of the story. Sunridge was al ha also had warrants trading in the stock market. The company in the news release had said that they would pay two cent for each warrant of the company. You could pretty much buy the warrants at one and a half cents. And instead of trying to get your cash back, you could have given a sell order at two cent for these warrants. Now, for a lot of investors, there's not really much difference between one and a half cent and two cents. 
But ladies and gentlemen, that's an arbitrage upside of 33%. I personally did about four or five transactions, round of transactions over a period of six months. This continued for six months. But the Sunridge story continues. And this is, I want to leave a glimpse of the opportunities that exist in the arbitrage, in arbitrage in these companies. Sunridge was trading in OTC. Sunridge was delisted from the venture exchange, but that created some confusion. And for almost a week, Sunridge in the US was trading between five cents to 10 cents. People I know bought Sunridge on OTC at five cents and made about 500% on their investment over the next one week or so. But the story actually continues. The company re returned 35 cents to, for each share to the investors. Basically, if you did, again, primary school math, you would have seen that there was a still four cent value left in the share. It was a still trading on OTC. For seven months thereafter, it traded for between 1.5 cent and 2.3 cents, when the value was four cent Canadian. Basically, you were investing for an upside of between 35% to 100% over that seven month period. So why does arbitrage exist? I don't really understand the same thing that we saw with two gas stations. One gas station manages to sell gas at a premium of 12% compared to the gas station next doors. Efficient market hypothesis is a myth which believes that all information is built into the price. It is completely wrong. And then, as I have shown, this arbitrage can be much more exciting in the junior mining industry just because this is a very illiquid part of the market. Let me talk about very briefly a couple of more companies that no longer exist. Orico Metals was to acquire a company called Kiska. And all you had to do was to do some simple math to see that there was as much as 10 to 15% arbitrage that continued to exist in owning Kiska Metals while the deal was going through its merger. What you had to do was to do this one line math. Orico was offering 0 0.0667 share of, or, of Orico to Kiska Metals. You had to multiply that with the share price, and they were also offering a cash component. If you added that, you would have seen that there was this arbitrage of 10 to 15% in owning Kiska. This was another deal. Treasury Metals was acquiring a company called Gold Eye Exploration. And the math was extremely simple. 0.1 share of Treasury for each share of gold eye. When Treasury was selling for 65 cents, gold eye were often traded for five and a half cents. You had an arbitrage upside of 18%. This is a relatively risk-free trade, ladies and gentlemen. This becomes much more exciting. Paramount Gold Nevada was trading on New York Stock Exchange. It is still does. And it was acquiring a small junior called Calico Resources, which traded in the Venture Exchange. Now, again, you had to do this simple math. 0 0.07 share of Paramount is what you were going to get. You had to multiply that with the share price of Paramount and multiply it again with the exchange rate. For three to four months, there was an arbitrage upside of between 25 to 40% in owning Calico Resources. Moreover, 
because Paramount was trading in New York Stock Exchange, and if you did not know the value of Paramount, you could have even short sold your shares of Paramount to book 36% profit in the deal. It doesn't get much better than that. Now, these are not just isolated cases. I have as many companies I could fit in one sheet I have put here. All these transactions happened in the last one year. And this is the arbitrage upside I made in investing in the quarry companies. Gryphon Metal Minerals offered you a 47% upside while the merger with Teranga was happening. And there are many other um, deals here. I have left out many other companies that I did not believe in whose underlying value was not something I felt good about. So they are not even listed here. Again, this is something very exciting for the retail investors because big institutional investors cannot really invest for arbitrage. You can only invest 10 or $20,000 on a daily basis in these companies at best. Big money has no interest in such investments. That is where retail investors, if they keep track of the news releases, can make a lot of money. This is where I found arbitrage to be the best. When a very liquid big company acquires a small illiquid company, that's when you see the best arbitrage opportunities. Or when this is small venture company has very tired shareholders, that's when they sell for a small premium, leaving a lot of money on the table for anyone who can do basic mathematics. And even better, the best opportunities I have seen are when one company is in Canada and another company is in Australia. That's when you get the best arbitrage opportunity. And the reason is that most, a lot of people who own shares in Canada don't really have access to the Australian market and vice versa. So they dump their ownership. Let me uh, finish talking about arbitrage with two m mergers that are currently in process. I'm not going to go into details into this math that is on the screen, but Sandstorm is in the process of acquiring Mariana Resources. The arbitrage is only 3% right now. But the reason is that there is huge volume of Mariana shares currently tr trading in the market. My experience is that as volume dries up, the arbitrage tends to increase. I typically look for at least 20% arbitrage upside before I invest. This is another opportunity in the market right now. Eldorado Gold is acquiring Integra. And depending on how you do the calculation, because there are two, op two ways in how the shareholders will get their money. The Upside is between 1% to 10%, but if you use the weighted average, it comes to around 3 to 4% again. The good thing is that the volume is huge right now in Integra. Once this volume dries up, my guess is arbitrage will increase with time, offering you an opportunity to make low-risk, high-reward money. Let's, let me move on to something else very briefly before I close this talk. Rights offerings have recently started in the Canadian market. And what happens when rights offering, a company does rights offering is that the right is start trading on the, in the Canadian market. And the ticker is usually the ticker of the company dot RT. Now, I don't buy a lot of rights. I just buy a minimal 
number of rights. I invest maybe five or ten dollars to buy some rights. The good thing with rights is that once you have a minimal number of rights, you also have the right to apply for over allocation of shares. Let me use an example to explain this. Kaizen Discovery early last year was going through a rights offering. You needed three rights to own one share by paying an exercise price. Now you could have bought the right for half a cent. Three rights would have cost you one and a half cent and you would have exercised the right for 10 and a half cents, which meant that for 12, and 12 cent, you would have owned the share when the share was trading at 12 and a half cents. Now that really isn't much of an upside. That was about 4% upside. But this is the fun thing. You could have applied for over allocation. Now, an exercise price of 10 and half cent and compare it with share price of 12 and half cent. This was a profit of 19%. Now, why does your over allocation get allotted to you? The reason is very simple. A lot of investors forget or they are too lazy to apply to exercise their rights. I have never not had my over allocation request not allotted. It's as simple as that. I invested probably about $10 in the rights and exercised and I got a lot of over allocation in this company. There's another aspect to rights offerings and I don't really know how this pricing works but when a company does rights offerings it usually does the offering at a substantial discount to the share price which means that when the rights offering is closed the share price has a tendency to shoot up by the time i got my allocation the share price was 17 cent and it kept on going up after that there was a possibility to make a 62 percent profit in participating in this rights offerings. In my view, arbitrage offers you a fabulous opportunity to make money in the junior mining industry. You have to remember that you have to still understand the underlying value because if you don't really understand the underlying value, you can make a lot of mistakes. But this provides you a, a tool not only to make low risk, high reward money, but an opportunity to make a lot of money in cases as I showed in Sunridge Gold. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time.